you had asked me 10 years ago if I would ever start composting, I would have told you absolutely not. Everyone I knew that composted said it was too difficult, too smelly, and too expensive to start a setup. When I finally decided to start composting, my husband was convinced that we were only going to add to our pest problem, but he was even more concerned that we weren't going to have enough time to actually take care of the compost pile. And we'd end up at the end of the year with this giant pile of garbage in the backyard that the weeds have taken over. And to be honest, he was absolutely right. Until I found a better way to compost that was going to save me a ton of time, not cost me a dime, and it was going to prevent all the problems I'd already been having trying to take care of a big compost pile and using traditional compost methods. This episode is all about introducing you to composting. I'm going to be sharing with you what you can compost, what you shouldn't compost, and my favorite method of composting. And if home composting still isn't right for you, I'll be sharing with you my favorite type of compost to purchase. There are so many good reasons to compost, but I compost because I get a free way to feed my plants. And I'm reducing my garbage inside my house, so my trash can has been far less stinky, and I've had half as many bags of trash at the curb on pickup day. There are so many things that you can compost, but it's honestly easier to start off with what you can't compost. So I'm gonna share with you my no-no list for composting outdoors. Items that make the no-no list include anything that's going to attract rodents, maggots, or increase bad bacteria into the compost pile, which is absolutely not what you want. These foods are going to include meats, dairies, raw eggs, and then any carbohydrates like sugar, grains, bread, things like that. You're probably thinking, aren't we trying to avoid having all bugs in our compost pile? Actually, we want to keep beneficial insects and microbes in the compost so they can help us break down that organic material and make fresh, awesome compost at the end of the year. So we want to encourage them to stay. The only way to do this is to avoid anything that's going to repel them. This is going to include keeping any onion skins, garlic skins, or citrus out of the pile. These will repel insects and we want to keep the right ones there. A lot of people like to use grass clippings in the compost pile, and that's totally fine. That's a great source of nitrogen. But just make sure that you're not treating your lawn with an herbicide or a pesticide, because this will cause problems for your compost and your future plants as well, and it will still reduce the beneficial insects in the pile. This might sound obvious, but you want to avoid adding anything to the compost pile that's going to be toxic to humans. However, sometimes that gets a little more complicated than you think. For example, if you don't know what plants are in your yard, avoid putting them in the compost pile. Several plants have poisonous leaves, and this is going to be a problem when they break down your compost. Make sure that you avoid adding a chemical treated lumber or plastics to the compost pile. It's really easy to throw the plastics in when you throw in your veggie trash. Try to avoid that plastics can leach some chemicals into the soil. You also wanna be careful not to add human or animal remains into the compost pile. Not all animal waste is good manure. Make sure that if you are using an animal manure, it is properly aged. That does take several years, and you want to make sure that the compost that we're making today, which ages much faster, is separate from your pile of animal manure that you are letting age over time slowly like it's supposed to be. This is going to prevent any pathogens from getting into your compost and therefore getting into your vegetable garden and the food that you eat. Lastly, try to avoid adding any weeds. Weeds come with a lot of seeds, which is going to be a big problem in your compost pile when they germinate later on. And you wanna make sure that you avoid adding any plant trimmings from your ornamental or your vegetable garden that may contain diseases or fungal diseases because those diseases will be present in your soil and spread to the rest of your garden. Now that we've talked about what you can't add in the compost pile, let's talk about what you can add. I like to have different types of compost piles. The simplest is going to be a kitchen composting pile. Basically what this is, is just vegetable and fruit trash, usually trimmings, or fruit that went a little bit bad, 
and we're going to have coffee grounds and tea leaves in this pile. Very simple, easy to do. You can store everything in a jar that's sealed on the kitchen counter and take it out daily or every other day just to reduce the amount of work and effort that that takes. And then I like to have a compost pile that's for yard things, whether that's trimmed uh, branches, uh, whether that's discarded uh, items from the vegetable garden, a plant that's died. Um, I like to rake up leaves and leaves are a great way to make compost. I'll even take larger sections of logs and branches and add these into the pile. The reason why I like to have a separate pile for these is they take a little longer to decompose. Usually leaves take about 12 months and then larger branches and logs can take two to three years. And there's some great direct burial methods for those to decompose them quickly, but without them being in the way. I even have a separate way that I handle cardboard and paperboard. A lot of paperboard is not recyclable where cardboard is. So I use both in the same exact way and I use this as a weed suppression technique to recycle them as opposed to composting and reusing them in a compost pile. And I love that method. It's been a great way to save money on filter fabric, especially in major weed areas. When you first consider composting, you probably assume your compost pile is going to look like this. Gross trash that's visible and smelly. And that's why I figured out a better method of composting that I think you'll really love. Today I'm gonna to show you a few of the kitchen items I like to put into my compost pile and then the method I like to use to compost them. We're gonna start off with something really easy, eggshells. I take my eggshells, I use a microwave to kill the bacteria, and then I put them in a food processor and actually turn them into much smaller pieces so they decompose a little bit faster and then just sprinkle them into the compost pile. Coffee grounds are a great addition to the compost pile. You can even take these and add them directly to your acid-loving plants like your blueberries, your hydrangeas, your azaleas. But today they're going all in the compost pile. And if you have any large clumps from a coffee puck, break those up before you add them in. So this is pretty easy. These are our vegetable scraps from the kitchen. This is a pretty large piece, but it will decompose pretty quickly. These pieces are a much better size, but everything works. The key to adding vegetable trash into the compost pile is making sure that you take the seeds and discard them beforehand. The seeds are absolutely going to germinate in the compost pile and there's nothing wrong with that. But if they germinate, you are going to want to turn the compost pile. And my preference is to make this method as easy as possible, which means you set it and you forget it. These are rose petals, or at least they were rose petals. Now they are going to be perfect for the compost pile because I've used them. I actually make my own rose water using rose petals and this is what's left over. And you can do this with any of the vegetables or any of the green organic plant mat material that you have. If you steam vegetables and maybe you forget about them in the back of the fridge, as long as you don't use salt or oil when you're cooking with them, they're perfectly fine, even though they're a little overdone, but they're gonna be perfectly fine for that compost pile. So this is probably looking pretty gross, but all we have to do in a direct burial method is take our vegetable soil and completely cover all of our gross kitchen trash. And it only takes a thin layer. You can layer and layer your compost and your soil day after day or week after week until you have a nice full bed and leave it for a couple months and have it ready to go for the next vegetable season. Even though composting is pretty easy, sometimes it's just not right for everybody. But also, it's actually very difficult if you have a huge vegetable garden or have a lot of soil amendments that need to be done to make enough of your own compost to last you through a full year. That's why I supplement by purchasing some of my favorite compost. 
My favorite's going to be the leaf mold compost. And you're going to have this beautiful, rich, black, just amazing compost from leaf mold compost. This only takes about 12 months to produce and it's completely broken down, which is absolutely key to a good compost. If you're buying a compost that still has a lot of material like mulch that's not fully broken down, it's actually not compost yet, it's still mulch. So the key to buying a good compost is finding a reliable source and making sure that the compost is going to be fully broken down and ready for your plants to use right away. And this leaf mold compost is my absolute favorite. It's also a really great soil amendment. If you're planting directly in ground and you want to make sure that your heavier clay soils have a little bit of aeration and drain a lot better than they naturally will. If you're looking for more details on composting, check out my podcast and blog at the links below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for learning with me. Next week, don't forget to grab your gloves, pull on your boots, and meet me in the garden to get reinvigorated each week as I introduce you to interesting ideas and new plant selections just for you. I'm stuck. Ah! Okay, I'm actually stuck.